Welcome to Unit 1, Chapter 3, Gmail. Taking a look at our essential outcomes for this chapter, you will be using open and closed software to create for and format professional business documents. In this chapter, you will be using Google Drive, Gmail, and Microsoft Word. You will also be asked to complete the I can statements for Unit 1, Chapter 3 when you finish this PowerPoint. You will also be asked to articulate and utilize computer and software terminology. Professional versus personal emails. Professional versus personal email. Personal emails are ones that are used to communicate with family and friends. Professional emails are business oriented or school oriented given to you by the company or the school where you work. The abilities of email address vary depending on the type of personal email account a person chooses to use and the type of account the corporation sets up. Etiquette and security also vary depending on which account you're using and what messages you are sending. Personal emails um, follow the following etiquette. You always include a subject line. Never open an email up without a subject line. These may be computer bots that are sent to you that contain spam or harmful viruses. It is okay to use abbreviations and emoticons. Usually personal emails are not monitored unless your parents monitor them. You may use your personal email as you please. Grammar and punctuation are not as significant as they are in a professional email. Looking at a professional or school email, the following etiquette applies. Again, like personal, always include a subject line. Never open an email without a subject line. Emails should be considered an open book to your employer or school district. Everything from the messages you write to attachments you send are subject to scrutiny and should be kept strictly business. Corporate or school email accounts are maintained and paid for by a company or school that wants accounts used for business purposes or professional purposes. Corporate or school email messages should be checked carefully for grammatical or spelling errors. They should include your full name and the full name of the recipient, in other words, the person receiving the message. They should not include any abbreviations or internet speak such as emoticons or shortcuts. Composing a professional email. To create an email, you're going to click on the Compose icon right above the inbox. When the new message box opens, you will click inside the to, and then you will begin to type in the person's name. Just like in Google Drive, when you share, if you have the person that you are named you're typing in is listed amongst your contacts, you will get a listing and all you have to do is click on the person's name to put in the email. You can also add additional email addresses by clicking to the right. CC stands for carbon copy. It's a feature that allows you to send a copy of your email to another email address. BCC stands for blind carbon copy. This is a feature that allows you to send a copy of your email to another person without the original contact knowing that they received the email.
When you send an email, you should always put in a subject line. The subject line is usually a short phrase that describes the email. You should never send an email without a subject line, nor should you ever open an email without a subject line. So, number one, make sure you always include a subject line in the email. Number two, if someone sends an email without a subject line, never open it. Um, more than not, an email without a subject line may be a computer bot email that contains various viruses and malware trying to get you to get your personal information. Three, the subject line should be a phrase on topic and follow all the rules for English grammar and punctuation. After you put in your subject line, you will click above your name and then begin to write in your um, email, your text. Make sure you are right to the point on your email. The message should be as on point and as short as possible. In the business world, long emails usually do not get read quickly. Keep them short and cover what you need. The message area follows all of the English grammar and punctuation rules. Note, remember emails are not text messages. You may not receive a quick response when using the email, nor should you use uh, shortened um, symbols or like you do in texting. Everything should be follow the grammar and punctuation rules. Once you format or once you write out your email, you can do some formatting to it. By selecting the letter A with the underline, you will find that you can format your text. Once you click on it, a toolbar will open up that looks very similar to this one. You can change your font style, you can bold, italic, underline, change the font color, center, you can even add lists. Um, so, um, once you're done writing your text, you can go in and format that um, the text to um, whatever manner that you want. Attachments. Um, if you go to your menu bar, you're going to see a little paper clip. If you select that paper clip, clip you will be able to attach a document to send with your email. Attachment, uh, the attachment icon will allow you to send a copy of a document to another person. This is different than sharing on Google Drive. Sharing allows you to provide copies for multiple people online where they can all work together at the same time. Attaching or sending a document is sent to each person and each person um, works on their own document. So. If you want someone to send a corrected document back to you, if you send it out to four different people, you're going to get four different documents. Whereas in Google Drive, um, when you share, you'll have one document where four people are able to work on. Um, once you click on the attachment, um, you will have to browse to find your document. When you're doing email, you can also go to your Google Drive and um, also attach a document through your Google Drive. Um, if you look on the, tool, uh, on the menu bar, you're going to see a uh, Google Drive icon that allows you to send a document via Google Drive rather than sharing the document with others. All you need to do is when you click on your um, Google Drive icon, the insert files using Google Drive will open and then you will just browse for your document. You can also add a hyperlink into your email. If you go to the menu bar, you're going to see your hyperlink icon. Once you select that icon, the edit link um, box will open. You can add your text to be displayed. Let's say we want to provide a link to Business Week. 
um, website, we could type in business week and then we would copy and paste the URL into uh, for business week into the web address box and then click OK. Let's say we also wanted to include an email. We could also um, open up this email, click on it, put in the email address. Notice there's something that tells us we can actually test the link. Then we click OK. How do you delete an email? It's very simple. All you need to do is go, let's say you start an email and you decide you do not want to send it. If you just go to the far right corner and find the little trash can and click on that, you'll be able to delete your email. Congratulations, you have just finished the last section. Log into your Gmail account. Compose a professional email to your teacher, the message. Discuss in the email the difference between a professional email and a personal email. When the teacher responds to your email, open it and read the response. Then move the email to your enter to computer folder you created in your category folder. Once you have finished, log out of Google Drive. Congratulations, you have just finished section 3-3. Make sure your teacher has your work, then go back to the class website to see what your next step is.